Hi, I'm Randall. I grew up along the coast of Maine, and that's where my love of the ocean started. I sailed over 10,000 miles in my 20s, and after hanging up my Fowleys, I rediscovered my love of the bicycle. Both cycling and sailing connect me to nature and give me a sense of freedom and adventure. Now, I'm gonna try to combine the two. I bought this old sailboat with the goal of sailing it to the Caribbean and then to Europe to do some epic sailing and exploring by bike. But first, I've gotta refit and modernize this big old classic. Oh, and I'm on an insanely tight budget, so I'm gonna do as much of the work as I can myself. And if I can do it, so can you. Special shout out and thank you to our newest Patreon supporters. Thanks so much for helping to make this possible. <laughs> All right, so it's peak off season here. So the number one item on the list for the off season was the stuffing box, which if you caught the earlier episode, uh, I replaced with a traditional style book Algonquin uh, bronze stuffing box. So I'm really happy with that. Number two is my engine coolant leak. Coolant's leaking. I have an, an active engine coolant leak that I have not sourced where it's coming from. I've put lights on it, I've put GoPros, tiny cameras, I've done everything I could to try to find where it is. It's just that the engine room is so dark. Part of me is thinking, and tell me if I'm crazy in the comments, but in order to source where this leak is, I need to clean up the engine room, make it a lot more visible. And one of the things that's been in the back of my mind is a Gulf Star 50 called Calypso. Jonathan, the amazing owner, put together this really clean, engine room that has stuck with me ever since. It was just such a remarkably clean, tidy environment. It felt safe and manageable to someone like me who's new to engine rooms and all the bits and pieces that go into the systems. I've had that in the back of my mind going, boy, I'd really like to get to that place where Jonathan took his boat. Maybe this is an opportune time and this coolant leak gives me a good reason to do it. So I jumped into the engine room overhaul project and boy did that slippery slope get a lot more complicated. It actually involves a field trip to a factory. It's pretty involved. So for now I'm going to push that off till next time and in the meantime I'm going to bring to you the next item on the priority list which is bedding plates, chain plates, chalk blocks, and even some hatches. You might remember a few months ago when Walter Schultz from Shannon Boat Company popped in to give me a few bits of advice. I mentioned that I was having some pretty decent sized leaks that would happen after rainstorms and he pointed to chain plates, bedding plates, in addition to the chalk block that I've actually seen leaking. He felt that the chain plates and bedding plates were really the likely source for more water volume coming in. <laughs> That's about as easy access. That's actually no problem. So it's just the question of freeing those uh, bolts right there and pulling the truck up. Easier said than done. Right. You have to finesse it with a bar, all right, so you don't want to crack the, the tow rails are yeah. coming up. But Christ, it's leaking that much, though. It, the way it is. Would there be something else that would be leaking more? Uh, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking, like that chain plate. Yeah. It's hard to believe, you know, and you'll see what I'm talking about when we pop that truck off, the truck yeah. off, that you're getting that much water. It's it's a pretty slow drip that comes off that nut, and then when I end up in the village, I end up with, you know, a gallon or two or three. Over what after period of time? Rainstorm. Oh, really? Yeah. That chain plate right there is a big suspect yeah. because it's always microscopically moving. It's yeah. a, sure. Constant. Constant. Yeah. The, What's usually the issue there? Is it just the bedding? Yeah. yeah. Well, the bedding is dead. Yeah. 50 years. Yeah. Bedding goes south 20 years. That's about the the limit with, with uh, bedding. Well, you gotta you see the plate? Yeah. Gotta pop that. Yeah. Clean out all the old junk. Yeah. Put it down. So clean out the old junk is what we're gonna do. We're gonna start just jumping right in. I have to say it's really great to have the boat on the hard and feel like I can just kind of take things apart and have at it. I got my special helper Rue, who you'll see throughout the summer. He's been an enormous help to jump in and keep the momentum going and add in a second pair of hands and some expertise too. We decided to tackle the chalk block first because it seemed to have the most archaeology required. I 
lot of dum dum. Mmm, <laughs> that looks juicy. Yeah. That was maybe a little worse than expected. The rot is going to be tricky, but I think we'll scrape it back to good material and then we'll use some penetrating epoxy to shore it up. I'm happy with how this looks actually. Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm kind of surprised. In the meantime, Rue has decided that he wants to take a crack at sandblasting the actual chalk block. It's an aluminum block, so should clean up pretty well. Rue's going to prep the whole area, and then we're going to get some penetrating epoxy cooking. We're going to pour that into the tow rail and really shore up any wood that's suspect. While he's cleaning that up, and then he's going to sandblast the chalk block, I'm going to get busy popping off all the bedding plates and then prepping the surface so we can put some penetrating epoxy into the screw holes for the bedding plates. Yeah, you can see the cracking of the bedding on the inside of it. Yeah. And I've got to do that 12 times on this boat. <laughs> Nothing like uh, getting into the groove. The process is pretty simple. Once you've undone the bedding plate screws, you just put a heat gun on it to soften up the existing bedding. With a little bit of prying force and a little bit of working around the perimeter, you can pop up the bedding plate. I like to use a few sandwich baggies to keep all my parts organized and coordinated to the right chain plate. It's a little OCD but these things can quickly add up into a big pile of parts. The trickiest bedding plates were the mizzen lower chain plate ones. They're kind of at a curve and they reside on the cabin top, so I had to use this little block to get a little bit of leverage and prying force on them. Not every prying attempt went smoothly. Don't forget, I'm still on a boat, so you know what happens. That is officially a knuckle buster. Oh man, I hit the same mother <laughs> spot on my little finger, uh, right at the knuckle. Oh my God. Now comes cleanup. So cleanup is straightforward, but it's also times 12. So a couple hours there, then I can get back to the task of rebedding. I found this new product that I really like. It seems to help a lot um, in fixing fiberglass and cleaning chain plates. Um, it's this. Yeah, try it. While I'm doing chain plate palooza, Rue is fast at work setting up the tow rail to do the epoxy pour. He's setting up the bottom of it to do a little bit of a dam, and then we're going to prep the two bolt holes. We're going to pour the penetrating epoxy inside the holes, and then we're going to drill those out. So any soft woods will, should be solidified by the epoxy, and then we're going to have nice fresh holes to put our bolts back in. I'm going to jump in on the bottom side and plug the existing holes with a little bit of tape so that we don't have the penetrating epoxy just pouring in. So uh, yeah, I expected it to seep down into here and that's that's pretty good. So I think we'll just kind of keep going out again. Oh uh, yeah, keep pouring 
let it soak in a little bit, keep pouring. That's pretty good there. Yeah. And while that's curing, we're gonna head over to the sandblasting machine inside the workshop and try to clean up the chalk block. Just like that we can fast forward with the magic of editing and you've got your finished aluminum painted chalk block. We use the Total Boat aluminum paint, sticks really nicely to that cleaned up surface. And now we're just going to prep that area for bedding and securing that down to the tow rail. With the dry fit prep ready and everything masked off to protect it from the adhesive, we're going to go ahead and put in some black 3M4200 sealant. I wanted to use a black sealant just to make sure any excess would match the chalk block. While Rue is doing that, I'm going to jump down below and wipe up the excess that's going to squeeze through the bolt holes. And then some. Since these chalk block bolts are through bolted, I just have to put a nut on the bottom side with a washer, cinch them down and that'll cinch everything up and squeeze that 4200 all around and give it a nice watertight seal. This is one of those two person jobs that with Rue up top, he's got a screwdriver holding that bolt in place, which this would be impossible trying to do this as a one person job. So, so many times I really appreciate his help, his expertise and uh, in this case just a second pair of hands with that all locked down now i'm just going to come back with a little bit of eco solvent and wipe off that excess 4200 i'll probably paint this cabinet using some bilge paint make it nice and white shiny like the rest of the bilges that i've paid some attention to <laughs> Final touch, we want to cover over the exposed bolt heads with a little bit more 4200 and make that nice and smooth so that there's no water that's going to collect and seep in around the head. You might notice the gray squares off to the side here. That's my little inexpensive trick for creating a smooth surface with epoxies. I used that when I was making bamboo bicycles back in the day. It's basically a vinyl shower pan liner, which they sell in giant sheets for pretty cheap, much like a peel ply is for fiberglass, and it ends up leaving a nice smooth surface because the vinyl won't allow any type of adherence to the sealant. It looks a little rough right now, but when we trim it up and get it ready for the tow rail to be varnished, it should look pretty tidy. And now it's time to get back to my main task, which is the bedding plates. Before I get too far along, I've got to clean up the existing surface and remove any of the legacy bedding compound, which is pretty laborious, but a little bit of beer and some tunes make it go that much faster. I'm gonna dip into my eco solvent jug again and clean up the surface with just a little bit of a light scrub just to make sure that the sealant's gonna adhere nicely. After all that prep, all the cleanup, times 12, I'm finally ready to crack out the total boat sealant. So I'm gonna put down a layer right around the chain plate and then I'm gonna put another layer on the bedding plate. I'm really just gonna overdo it and then worry about the cleanup with the solvent that I have handy. All right. <laughs> a lot of cleanup on aisle four over here. Uh, basically, I put it on like a bunch of chimpanzees in a zoo cage. Slop cam. <laughs> uh, I'll get better at this, as with everything else. Yep. 
practice makes perfect, so good thing I've got 12 chain plates to practice on. getting a little stress test here of the bedding plates. It is uh, really coming down pretty dry. And by pretty, I mean totally. Um, you might see a little reflection here. That's actually the epoxy that dripped through when we were putting in the uh, penetrating epoxy. Same with there. So totally bone dry. This is the corner where it would get really, really wet. And now that's dry. And then we go to the bilge. Bilge would usually pick up a couple of gallons, and guess what? We've got a nearly dry bilge that's almost evaporated, so uh, I've not seen that ever. So, feels pretty good, and also, I gotta add, it's super cozy in here with the rain coming down. I can just imagine being on a mooring or on the anchor, just kinda curling up with a book, uh, friends, family, just kinda hanging out and listening to the rain above. It's really peaceful here. With this newfound confidence of bedding and rebedding, I took a look at the forward two hatches on the boat. If the rebedding process is this straightforward, dude, they do leak and it is a little bit annoying and it's doing some damage to the varnish and the wood. Maybe I'm just gonna do another might as well since I'm here. It's a double-edged sword because you've got the boat sitting right here and it's nice and stable on the hard. So you might as well just tackle it and jump in and crank it out. But scope creep is real and it can delay launch pretty easily. So jumping right in, I wanna remove all the external varnish off the wooden part of the hatches. This is pretty easy and didn't even need a heat gun because Mother Nature had already done her trick in making it mostly gone. <laughs> One thing to note is the seam where the wood meets the fiberglass is where the water would wick up and under and get up under the varnish. Speaking of Mother Nature. Of course, now that I'm dealing with the hatches up front, I also have a nose piece that has been bugging me for a while. It's got this beautiful piece of teak that's just falling apart. I really want to remedy that too. So add that to my might as well do it while you're at it list. I'm gonna add in a little bit of flexible epoxy in the seams between the boards that are separating and then clamp that down. Total Boat actually came out with a wood-colored flexible epoxy, which would have been perfect for this, but this just works pretty great. After going down that rabbit hole, it's time to get back to the hatches. Rue is buzzing right through the hatch screws. That's not even a time lapse, that's his actual speed. It's about 90 degrees today, so we don't actually have to heat the bedding up too much. A few delicate taps with a crowbar and it popped loose. The kid has quite the touch with the crowbar. Wow, it's all the way up. And now it's time to get cleaning up those surfaces that were previously bedded. So I'm gonna clean up the top side of the wood hatch. And Rue's gonna clean up the metal part of the aluminum hatch. We put penetrating epoxy in every single screw hole. In addition to that, every seam that seemed to be a little bit more open. That way they'd be closed up and sealed up. And then of course, we wanna go back and sand over those and smooth it out and prep it for bedding. And since I'm right here, I might as well scrape down and sand and remove all the varnish on the interior teak. I have to say, I was kind of surprised. I don't know why, but the teak cleaned up so beautifully and looks so fresh. You know, this is 50 year old teak and it's looking brand new to me. 
sure it's got a few little spots where it's there's some holes and a few cracks but we've sealed those up pretty nicely so now comes the fun part of putting the bedding on and putting the hatches down and then screwing them down we went with the black 3m 4200 again here mostly because the black with the wood should be fairly seamless if i put a white sealant there or clear it's not going to look nearly as good so uh, this makes it essentially look like a darker shadow right at the seam. A couple of last steps with this is to do a little bit of 4200 over the screw heads. Once we're done covering those up, we're going to go around the edge with a little bit of eco solvent and clean up any kind of messy edges where the sealant has leaked out and might look a little unsightly. And practice makes perfect, so we're going to do this the second time and probably get a little bit better at it the second time. All in all, I think the hatch project took us about seven hours total. We spread it out over two days. It wasn't a critical thing to fix, but I think for a quick win like that, I feel a good sense of accomplishment. I do have one step left though, which because I'm not in a great area for varnishing and dust-free environment, I don't know if you can tell by the decks, but I'm under a tree that ends up shedding a lot of different debris. So I want to seal the wood and the beautiful color teak, but I'm not ready to do a full varnish job. So I'm going to put down some wood sealer for now, and that should lock in that color and protect the wood until I can get to a nice clean environment. So far so good. Really love that honey warm color. Even though it's just a uh, sealer, uh, it makes me excited for the varnish. I used a bunch of different products in this episode. I used Total Boat Wood Sealer, Total Boat Sealant, Total Boat Thixo Flexible Epoxy. If you're in the market for one of these products, head over to totalboat.com slash yacht hunters and you'll get 5% off your order. And I'm also going to throw a few links down below for other products that I think are totally indispensable, like my knee pads and my headlamp. Can't live without those. And of course, thanks so much to our Patreon supporters. Without your support, this really wouldn't be possible. So I really appreciate it. You guys are the best.